Hello guys, Steven Ducks here. Welcome to this video. So today we're going to talk about uh, one of the pretty much the most insane takers that happened in the last two weeks, which is TOP and MNGL. Following with a bunch of the sympathy play, there's going to be a lot of technical analysis uh, involved this, in, in this video. So make sure pay attention to it and let's get into the video. So uh, the first one we have TOP. This one went pretty much fully parabolic. Now before TOP, we had a very slow market. Now going into the intraday level, let's take a look at the long-term chart. Uh, this is a pretty recent IPO. We're up on the first green day. Typically on the first green day of IPO, you shouldn't be even trading it, especially going short. So I did heard about a lot of people trying to short into the consolidations, including me as well. I think I shorted it going to the first green day, shorted around 19, uh, added around 18 and covered around 19 before the close. So I dodged this entire squeeze uh, to all the way up to 250. And then after open, I think I took a short around 110, 120, risking the little consolidations right here, but it didn't really go. As I expected, I took a decent loss uh, into this parabolic and I didn't really place a trade right after that because, uh, you know, the, when it landed around uh, 250 as a double top compared to the pre-market, I think it's a decent short uh, by shorting around 250, uh, adding up into the bounces and covering while it's going down. But overall in this ticker, uh, I'm not very confident because I have not seen a ticker that losses 75% of its own gain in the pre-market and came all the way back to test the pre-market high. So, and this is definitely an exception. It is a low flow, but it's not an extremely micro flow. So I wasn't expecting this one push, you know, from 50 to uh, 256. And, uh, and same thing going in with MEGL. This is what I took a loss on as well. I'm going to go through my thinking process. MEGL is the sympathy play of TOP going to the first green day right about here. This, this ticker actually got through the resistance. So it was looking really heavy after market open. And also it was looking really heavy uh, into the consolidations. It, it looked like it's about to do a consolidation breakdown while TOP is going up. So whenever a sympathy play looks really heavy, and the main play looks really strong. Uh, when the main play tends to lose its momentum, uh, it typically sympathy play uh, loses more momentum compared to the major play. So MEGL, it was doing some weird behaviors in level two. So I took uh, small positions, I think it was around 3.7. The first spike right about here, it didn't really scare me out uh, because right after open, it did a massive stuff uh, going all the way back to 3.30, but it turns out it recovered all of its going again and squeezed above that four. Uh, 70. That's where I cut my losses. I think I took a decent loss in those two tickers uh, all together because I did not expect a uh, ticker come, comes all the way back, test the uh, pre-market resistance. I think even though if I caught the double day top in the midday and will not hold this one overnight. So if I'm shorting around 530, uh, I will probably not hold this one overnight and probably be end up covering around 4 to 450 ish. So the total gain on MEGO maximum will be around 20 to 25%. Not exactly a great reward, but it does involve uh, tons of risk. This is the one that I took two losses on, but not on the major squeeze, uh, going from 18 to 250. I think I shorted around 120, covered around uh, 140. Couldn't really get out into the hold, but came out with a decent loss and I recovered it in going into the next week. So those are the major play that happened. And ever since after TLP and EGL, there's tons of mon money flowing back into the market because people made money on TLP thinking there's going to be the next uh, TLP squeeze happening in the next couple of days. But all of the tickers faded 90% from the top. Now going into the backside of TLP, I did place a shore when it when it did a massive panic going to the 80s, I covered around 60s because I thought there were some support uh, right about here, 40 to 60, but it went, you know, but in fact, it, it went all the way back down to, to 10. So there wasn't any consolidation to risk off. There wasn't any support to risk off. And the only support right here is about 15 to 16, but, you know, it went through that support as well. So this chart doesn't really have a, a really good edge other than shorting around this double double top 
and if you're not shorting around that double top then shorting into the bounces risking 250 that's about 20 30 percent risk not really worth it shorting top the only edge i see is a 250 ish but i don't think anybody can wait all the way till 250 before it plays a short and not, not taking loss on it so uh, that's on top and megl and after that it produced tons of bounce short one bounce short right here going to 270s and one bounce short today going to 290s those two bounce short can make this amount of money cover uh, partial losses back the short around 80 covering around 60 for me covered the major of my losses on those two hyped up ticker but there is a lot to learn especially those two day runner uh, whenever you see a ticker going in massive parabolic going up a couple thousand percent in one day always expecting there's a push after market open the same thing that didn't really happen after market open it was cxai so that one was also giving people the wrong reference to shore you know into the pushes uh, after market open always be careful with the low float and always be very selective especially when you see a major play going a couple thousand percent there's plenty of edges going to come into the markets can't wait for either bounce shore because these type of tickers can always come back and test the resistance and that's easy money from there going in, in the front side especially when the stock is gaining volume and going parabolic those are the most dangerous moment for shorting so always tend to wait for a consolidation then going to this week's uh, recap uh, for PA and CW this one is also a very similar chart compared to FRC FRC did a dip came all the way back and parabolic in, in the morning I thought it, you know once the consolidation stops around PACW it's going to break down but instead came all the way back and break through the consolidations that's where I come in losses and I traded uh, the bounces right here so shorted around 570 cover around 580 so those are the two losses I took on PACW one thing to learn is I'll probably need to wait a little bit longer consolidations on these type of high volume high market cap type of tickers because FRC did consolidate about three, two to three hours before it actually shifted its momentum. So also the gaining percentage, went, I think FRC went from 10 to 50. So the gaining percentage from the bottom to top is about 500%. This one only gained about 100%. So those are the small details that I need to pay attention to in the future for PACW. Going to today, it gapped up in the morning and there is pretty much no edge to short. You know, unless shorting right at the open, I don't think it's very ideal because you have a support around six typically you want to uh, cover before the support so it will be 6.5 6.2 ish not very ideal in terms of shorting as a multi-day runner we'll see how it goes tomorrow if it gaps down then there's pretty much no opportunity anymore but uh, if it comes back up and tends to go parabolic again, form a consolidations, that would be a great opportunity to short. And uh, other than that, we have a lot of tickers to go through. One thing that I want to cover, OMH. Now this ticker, it looks very similar to VCIG. In the last two weeks, you are seeing tons of tickers going from seven to 40 and six to 30 and phasing after hour. Don't trade into these type of holds. And these type of tickers, when they go up significantly, there's always people getting trapped into those holds. There's always a bounce coming in the next week or two, forming a consolidation then breaks down. So those are very easy tickers to short and uh, shorting to the front side is not very ideal. Always wait until the stock gives you an edge, either form consolidations or give you a decent risk to risk off because you know, recently all those IPO tickers can go up thousands of per percent in one day. It doesn't really matter about the flow, doesn't really matter about the market cap. Uh, those are the fresh chart and very dangerous to short. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. Uh, there's going to be a monthly recap on the account statements in this next video. So I will see you guys in the next one.